Well, uh, part 13 of the pentagram, the last one I looked into Jura's irregular pentagon, pentagram, and what I suspect was an intentional way of not drawing it properly to encode some other information. But let's, uh, how do we draw a, a pentagram? Where's my little, okay, so how do we actually draw one? It's using the vesica, it's actually very simple. So, well enough, but anyway, uh, compass and straight edge, you're not technically allowed to use the markings on, on there. And again, if you just got a, a compass and a, and a straight edge, it's very uh, simple to do. And so I'll start with uh, Vesica. So set your compass. The size doesn't really matter for now. Now, because the ruler wasn't long enough, I didn't extend, but that's not important because we're going to draw it on this side. And so without changing the compass, put on the edge of the circle. This instruction, construction line is an important feature, so it needs need to start with that. Okay, so what we have now is a vessel of the fish, the arm, and this important symbol in all, you know, all sorts of religious and associated, but very, very important in geometry. It's practically, it's prop one of, proposition one of book one in Euclid's elements. Okay, now what we've done is, well, now we have 90, 90, 90 degrees, and we also have the center of the vesica, which is at a three to two ratio. Now we need to draw one more circle. And I'll just draw the whole, you don't even need for, uh, I won't even draw this, okay, no, I will draw the circle, but you could just mark the point, you could mark, and that's enough, but I'll, I'll just draw the circle in anyway. And we've, this you pretty much have all the points you need to begin construction. So first off, let's define this as zero. That's the center, yeah. And therefore, this is one. This is two. This is three. They're all equal in size. We also know because it's, for instance, that's the compass is set at two. Because of that circle, we know that this point is also. Okay, negative two we could call it, but that's two from the center. Now that's enough. You, now we with Pythagoras. So the pentagram, pentagon are all at perfect phi proportions. Phi equals one point six one eight zero 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 three three nine eight eight. Now that number goes on forever. To represent it as a number is very, 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 basically impossible. But we can represent it perfectly as a geometric construction and phi also equals the square root of five plus one over two so that's one way you can calculate it now we can also do that with this construction because okay we already have one and that's two so just if i draw this triangle firstly it's a right angle triangle Therefore, we can apply Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That length is one, that length is two, so it's one squared plus two squared equals c squared. One plus four equals c squared. One plus four is five. Therefore, this distance here is the square root of five. So set our compass to the square root of five. Square root of five plus one over two is five. So we can now mark that. So square root of five plus one divided by two is five. Therefore, this is two five. Now all we need to do is to go back to our original compass setting, which was set at two. And it's important to go back to two because now we can put this on the edge. What you wanna do is create an arc. So what we've done is now we've bisected this portion of the line. We've cut that in half. 
the total length was 2 phi. Therefore, this point is phi. Phi, phi, and also worth noting that phi minus 1 equals 1 over phi. So phi minus 1, therefore that's 0 0.61833, or 1 over phi, phi minus 1. But now we have, it's, it's at a phi ratio, it's all proven, you know, so it, there we have all the points, but that's all we need to construct the pentagram. It was important to put that back to 2 to bisect that line, because firstly we had that portion of the arc at 2, and that portion of the arc at 2. So these were equal, therefore it's bisecting the line, but it also creates exactly what you need to draw the pentagram. And by it I mean, so let's, this point, this one, and this one. And we just do the same on the other side. We can extend it all the way down to, uh, just to make sure you got more, more than enough line to carry on. Okay, so what we already have is a 36 degree angle, but now let's consider this portion as well. So firstly, okay, we should start starting back at zero and to the two phi portion. That's your top line, there's your point. Now, this part here, where that, again, all the points are here for you, so yeah. Extend that out. And again, from zero through that point. And you can test this in GeoGebra or whatever program you want. What we have now is the a uh, pentag pentagon based on the golden ratio. It's all perfect. So that would be 36 degrees. This would be 108 degrees. 108, 108, 108. Uh, the heart angle. So anyway, so that's how you can draw a perfect pentagram. Now if you want to do an inverted pentagram you would do exactly the same thing but I, I began at the top and extended out but if I had done exactly the same on the bottom I would have the... There's my little, yeah. So if I'd begun the other way around I would have a inverted pentagram. Now also you could to draw an inverted pentagram you could even just you have these five points here and so one two three four five so that's freehand but that would be a inverted pentagram on the outside it's all fire ratio all that stuff but that's how you can draw a perfect one. Have a good one.